Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. My name is Sherry Hammers and we are continuing on in Andrew Murray's book called The Holiest of All. And we are on chapter 91 called Love and Good Works. He starts off with Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Andrew says, and let us consider one another. He that enters into the holiest enters into the home of eternal love. The air he breathes there is love. The highest blessing he can receive there is a heart in which the love of God is shed abroad in power by the Holy Ghost and which is on the path to be made perfect in love. I just love that visual that we go into the holiest and the air that we breathe there is love. Let us consider one another. When we first seek the entrance into the holiest, the thought is mostly of ourselves. And when we have entered in in faith, it is as if all we can do to is it, it is as if it is all we can do to stand before God and wait on him for what he has promised to do for us. And that is so true. Many times <clears throat> excuse me, we come to God and we we're, we are so consumed with our laundry list of things that we are needing from him. And that, I mean, that is normal. That is expected. But here is a, here's another thing to think about when we go into the holiest of all. But it is not long before we perceive that the holiest and the lamb are not for us alone. That there are others within with whom it is blessed to have fellowship in praising God that there are some without who need our help to be brought in. So we knew, we know that there are others within with whom it's blessed to have fellowship. So we know that when we go there, we need to be um, fellowshipping with other believers. But he said, there are some that are without, like they are on the outside, who need our help to be brought in. Let us consider one another. All the redeemed form one body. Each one is dependent on the other. Each one is for the welfare of the other. Let us beware of the self-deception that thinks it is possible to enter the holiest into the nearest intercourse with God in the spirit of selfishness. It cannot be. The new and living way Jesus opened up is the way of self-sacrificing love. The entrance into the holiest is given to us as priests there to be filled with the Spirit and the love of Christ and to go out and bring God's blessing to others. Now, I'll remind you, the definition of a priest is one who brings someone to God. They point people to God. So we are to minister before God as priests so that uh, that just inherently means that we're going to be ministering to others and not just others in our company, but others that are not yet right with God, uh, those that are outside of the of fellowshipping with God. He says, let us consider one another. The same spirit that said, consider Christ Jesus. Take time and give attention to know him well. So he's saying, when you consider Christ Jesus, take time and give attention to know Jesus well. He says, the spirit says to us, consider one another. So when he says, consider Jesus, He's, when he says, consider Christ Jesus, he also says, consider one another. Take time and give attention to know the needs of your brethren around you. How many are there whose circumstances are so unfavorable, whose knowledge is so limited, whose life, their whole life is so hopeless that there is but little prospect of their ever attaining the better life. For them, there is but one thing to be done. We that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each one who begins to see what the blessedness is of a life in the full surrender to Christ should offer himself to Christ to be made his messenger to the feeble and weary. So I see when he was talking about the brethren, I whenever I see brethren in the context of scripture, I think of it as brethren, someone who is in covenant. In other words, the, the company of the saints. So he's saying, even around you, those people that have come to God, some of them are really feeble and weak, and we need to be bearing 
uh, one another's burdens. He goes on, consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Love and good works. These are to be the aim of the church in the exercise of its fellowship. Everything that can hinder love is to be sacrificed and set aside. Wow, that would cut, that would cut out a lot of problems, wouldn't it, among believers? That if everything, every single thing, envy, you know, co this spirit of competition and just all this strife, all of these things, if you went around and you said, you know what, everything in me that's hindering love right now, it's going to die. It's got to die, and I'm putting it aside. He says, everything that can promote and prove and provoke others to love is to be studied and performed. And with love, good works too. The church has been redeemed by Christ to prove to the world what power he has to cleanse from sin, to conquer evil, to restore to holiness and to goodness. Let us consider one another in every possible way to provoke, to stir up, to help to love and good works. The chief thought is this, life in the holiest must be a life of love. And Christ is love, and there can be no real access to God as a union with Him in His holy will, no real communion with Him, but in the spirit of love. Our entering into the holiest is mere imagination if we do not yield ourselves to the love of God in Christ, to be filled and used for the welfare and joy of our fellow men. O oh, Christians, study what love is. Study it in the Word, in Christ, in God. As thou seest him to be an ever-flowing fountain of all goodness, who has his very being and glory in this, that he lives in all that exists and communicates to all his own blessedness and perfection as far as they are capable of it, thou wilt learn to acknowledge that he that loveth not hath not known God. Now that's a mouthful. But if God lives in everything that exists, and he, he communicates his blessedness to them as far as they're capable. So if you are going, if you believe that you are um, a child of God and that you've tasted of his goodness, then he said you got to acknowledge that if you don't love, then you don't know God. And that will learn too to admit more deeply and truly than ever before that no effort of thy will can bring forth love. It must be given thee from above. This will become to thee one of the chief joys and beauties of the holiest of all, that there thou canst wait on God, the God of love, to fill thee with his love. God hath the power to shed abroad his love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit given unto us. He has promised to give Christ so dwelling in our heart by faith that we shall be rooted and grounded in love and know and have in us something of a love that passes knowledge. The very atmosphere of the holiest is love. Just as I breathe in the air in which I live, so the soul that abides in the presence of God breathes the air of the upper world. Again, I just love that. That is such a great picture that when you know, when we're, when we're in this sin-cursed world and the darkness seems to be closing in on us, we can actually lift our eyes, the eyes of our heart to God. We can flee to that place of refuge that Psalm 91 talks about, the secret place of the Most High. That's what Andrew, that's what this book is about. And we can breathe in the air of heaven into our very souls and let that refresh us and strengthen us. I'll go on. The promise held out to us and the hour of its fulfillment will come when the love of God will be perfected in us and we are made perfect in love. Nowhere can this be but in the holiest and there most surely. Let us draw nigh in the fullness of faith and consider one another. While we are only thinking of others to bring God's love to them, we shall find God thinking of us and filling us with it. I love that too. While we're over here real busy with bringing others to God and his love filling them, then God says, I'm going to fill you too. What does it say 
I think it's in Proverbs, it says, He that uh, refreshes others will himself be refreshed. It makes me think of like a glass, of, like a cup of water. Uh, God says, you help other people, I'll make sure that you're taken care of. The baptism of fire is a baptism of redeeming love, but that not as a mere emotion, but a power at once to consider and to care for others. So he's saying here, the love isn't this these goosebumps and you know warm fuzzies we get but it's not a mere emotion those emotions go along with love but he says that love is a power to consider and to care for others it's a power i love that how impossible to love others and give all for them in our strength we cannot do this in our own strength this one of the real gifts to be awaited for in the holiest of all to be received in the power of the pentecostal spirit the love of God so shed abroad in the heart that we spontaneously, unceasingly, joyfully love because it is our very nature. And, and so we can't get this out of ourselves. This has to be the nature of God living through us because our nature is corrupt. Our sinful nature is corrupt. But when God fills us, just like John the Baptist said, he must increase I must decrease. When God's love is overpowering our flesh, when we die to ourselves, then his love is shed abroad in our hearts to others. Thank you again for joining me. I appreciate so many of you out there that are um, just leaving comments, even if it's a little emoji, letting me know that you, you're just stopping by to encourage. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and uh, please like and share this with others that could benefit from strengthening their relationship with God as well, because that is the my goal in this channel, is to strengthen you in your walk with God. And if you don't have a walk with God, then um, know that God is waiting for you. He's waiting for you to just acknowledge your sin turn back from it, tell him, tell him, God, I didn't realize how serious sin uh, is to you. And I'm turning my back on that and I'm surrendering my life to you. Please come and fill me. He will do it. It's as simple as that. The faith of a child is what Jesus said. So if you don't know that you're, you don't know where your place is with God, please do that. God says, prove me and test me and I will show myself to you. Seek me. And there's another scripture. I think it's Isaiah 55. It talks, I think it's starting in verse 6. It says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. And draw, draw nigh to him while he is near. Something along those lines. But look that up. And God is saying he's ready for you to come and to get right with him. Thank you again for joining me. We'll see you next time. God bless.